Welcome to Metro Home Theater Tech Tips. I'm Brent McCall. I'm Adam Rogers. And tell us what we got today, Adam. Well, today's a fun episode. It's our first part of a six-part series. Well, first off, all of our episodes are fun episodes. Yes, they are. But this one I'm, I'm excited about. It, we'll, we'll put it that way. So uh, it's our episode one of our six-part series about the HDMI deconstruction. So we're actually going to be talking about what each of these wires inside of the HDMI cable do. Uh, and we're going to kind of break it down as from a, like a starting point, like what happens from the start of when you turn something on through to the point where you finally get a handshake through to the point where you actually get a picture on the Ooh. screen. So the first part that we're talking about today is hot plug reset and five volt power or probably hot plug, plug and, and five, five volt. volt. Uh, actually, I think it's reverse that isn't five volt first. 5 volt triggers the hot plug. Yes. You are correct. Yes. So but we'll get into that in the actual video. Yes, we will. Now, first off, we want to go ahead and talk about our sponsor for today. And today's sponsor is? The letter A for the HDM-AIO2. Uh, a for all. So what the AIO2, of course, does is it takes all of our fix-it de uh, devices that we have had in the past, our junior, uh, our dad, the ACVS, uh, ACVS. the VI2, the um, VCT. Yep. It's all built into one device, the all-in-one, AIO. So it does lots of things for you, of course. It will do the 5-volt in, uh, in power insertion onto basically anything that needs it, including the TMDS line, which later on in, a, uh, in an episode later on, we'll talk about what TMDS is and how it works and, and what it does. And it's very important to your life. It's probably, actually, all, there's almost very... Oh, there's maybe one, one thing in there that you don't really need, but that's my own opinion on that. Um, but yeah, it adds all the 5 volt power that you need. It has the, uh, the hot plug interrupt feature in it as well. Uh, you can, of course, go on to our website, metrohometheater.com, and see all of the different things that it does for it. If you're running into a problem where you think you might need the AIO2, give us a call. You can, of course, call me here at the tech support line at 386-492-8584. Uh, of course, you can call Brent as well at 866-839-9187. Extension uh, 2203, and it will find me on my cell phone if I'm not here. Correct. Which so, I'm generally not. Yeah. So give us a call. Ask your distributors. Ask your reps if they are available and what the pricing is for them as well. And we'll talk more about those later on. And don't forget, subscribe, 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 and click the bell. Yeah. Guess what? We've made it over 900. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you, yeah, you stay over there. Uh, we made it over 900. We're on our way to 1,000. We're actually yes. slowly creeping up to that there. So as always, guys, hit that subscribe You're button. You're a creeper. Share, and well, you are. Uh, Share the, uh, share the videos out with everybody. If you if we have helped you out in some way and with any of our videos, we would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. Uh, we're on our way to the 1,000 subscribers, so hopefully we'll get there soon. And comment. And comment, yeah. Yeah, we'd love to hear your comments. Leave our, uh, uh, if you have any questions or comments about what we're talking about today, we would love to hear those in the chat. If you were watching this after the fact and you're watching the recording, we'd love to see all of your questions and comments down in the comment section below. We do monitor those. Uh, Brent and I will actually sit back here every now and then and go through all the comments and everything else and respond to them. Yes. And, and, and act. Because it's actually quite educational for us because, unfortunately, you are in a bit of a bubble in this environment. Yes. And your calls, your requests, your emails give us a whole lot of information that we need to know what to do. Yeah. So please help. All right. So, so let's get started, Adam. Yes. I see you have artwork and I didn't even yes. draw it. Yes. So what we've done today, we'll go ahead and start off with the first part of what happens when you turn on an HDMI device. First thing that happens is the source will send out five volts. Yes. Correct. And what, what does that do, Brent? Well, it's a simply a door knock. Right. Yo, hello. Anybody home? Mm-hmm. And that's really all it is. There's no information. There's no discussions. It is simply, is anybody there? Right. Now, the anybody could be the matrix, mm -hmm. the splitter, mm -hmm. a switch, an AVR, a display, a projector. It doesn't matter. Just something next in line. Right. And it's kind of like a relay. So let's make the assumption that I am a source. Adam is a display. Maybe a Pininfarina, a beautiful projector from the uh, early 2000s. Well, and I am beautiful. Pininfarina, Pininfarina Red. Yep. Pen and Red. Pen and Red. Now, between him and I, we're going to put an AVR. Okay. My large, unsweet iced tea is the AVR. So here's what happens. I get turned on. You pick up the remote. You hit a button. I turn on. Now, the AVR also turns on, and the display also turns on as part of the macro. Right. 
that has nothing to do with the HDMI chain. Right. The HDMI chain works like this. The very first thing I as a source do is I knock on the AVR. Hello? Anybody there? And the AVR will acknowledge that. Now it, it acknowledges it with what? Hot plug. Yes. So. Now, wait before yep, you. Go for it. Tell me what the hot plug is. So the hot plug is, uh, it is the power back to the, the, uh, the source device, one, to initialize the next step in the process of actually saying, yes, I see you. It's Simply, the response. Exactly, a who's there. Right. Now, the AVR, once it is, it knows I'm there, it still hasn't done any negotiation to speak of. It just knows that there's something knocking on its door. Right. It has replied, yes, I'm here. Now, the next thing the AVR does is it knocks on the next device in line, which is, in this case, the projector. Right. So it's saying, who's there? Mm -hmm. Now, once it does that, the projector replies to the AVR. Right. The AVR and the source now start the negotiations. The AVR will actually take over at this point and do the preliminaries. It will ask the display, who are you? What are you? What's your resolution, bitrate, and all the fan? Do you want audio, HDR? Right. Everything that has to happen, and it collects all this data and it holds it momentarily, and now it starts negotiating with the source. Right. Now, the reason the AVR does this is there may not be a display after the AVR. You may be using it for audio-only purposes. Mm -hmm. So if it determines there's not an AVR there, or excuse a display. me, a display there, right. then it will say, I am the end of the line, let's discuss what I can do. Right. So you're getting a little a little far ahead, that's actually going to be uh, next uh, week's episode, where we talk the about e the EDID information. So, what I want to do here is I do want to say, what problems I just stole your do we see, <laughs> that's alright, what problems do we see on these two lines? So. When you look at an HDMI connection, this is this is a poorly drawn uh, connection here, but you can get an idea so we're looking of what at it's it going to look like. Just like this. Yep. We're looking at it head on. So you have your HDMI connection here. What you wind up with is a total of 19 pins in an HDMI connection. Now, this is in the wrong orientation, but pretend this is all perfectly even and everything's perfect with that. Now, what's going to happen is you are actually going to see this one up here. This is pin number one. And this one down here is 19. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, and it goes back uh, side to side. So pin number 18, all the way down here, is our five volt power. This is the first thing that gets activated when that source device gets turned on. Well now, before you go further on that, let's mm -hmm. discuss a little bit about pin 18. Because pin 18 is unique. Yes, it is. When you look at all the pins, and we're gonna do a top-down view yep. of the HDMI terminal, Pin 18 is recessed. Yes, it is. Now, why is pin 18 recessed? Well, to be perfectly honest, because they don't want it to short out. Well, no. No? No. Okay. The reason pin 18 is recessed is they want everything else that can happen and needs to happen ah. physically connected prior to the connection of the 5 volt. Right. So once the 5 volt actually gets connected, all the other ones are already there so they can start the negotiation when that happens. That way, as it's actually being inserted into the HDMI port on, on the device, all of the TMDS lines, all the EDID right. lines, everything else is it's actually connected first before the 5 volt now, power is connected. This is very, very important, and I'll tell you why, and you and I have both taken this call. Yes. If for any reason the HDMI terminal or plug is not fully inserted into an HDMI terminal in the back of an AVR projector or Yep. source or other device, yep. it will not initiate that 5 volt. Right. So even though everything looks right, nothing's happening. Right. Because it's reset, it's recessed into the, the very first step that has to happen is, is not it? there, and so it cannot make that connection for that. And that's a safety reason for the, yes. the, the equipment itself, because if you had 5 power first, then everything else was coming in and being plugged too in at the soon. same time too soon, you could actually damage the equipment. And so that's why they recess that a little bit so nothing gets burned out. It is out. important to understand that to make sure your plugs are fully and completely inserted the cables into the plugs. If you're having those types of problems where you're seeing no picture, nothing's happening, no communication, the TV's not even saying that something's there, you just got a black screen, 
It's probably that. Check that first. And by the way, it doesn't happen just here. Adam and I were on a job yesterday mm -hmm. where there was a power terminal that looked like it was plugged in and the unit wasn't lining up, so we assumed that the device was faulty. Right. And the Phoenix plug just wasn't quite fully inserted. Correct. Yeah. So it's not just, it, it happens a lot of times. It's something to always check for at the very beginning of problem solving. Right. So when we go from the five volt power, the next thing in line that has to happen in the communicate in the process of the communication is actually going to be pin number 19. So pin 19 is actually over here. This is your five volt hot plug. Well, it's not always five volt. You are correct. Could be anything from 3.7 up by spec. And that's a whole other can of worms that we could get into. Yeah, that. and we will as yeah, this series progresses exactly. because voltage and current are becoming very, very critical to our world. Right. And current even more so than voltage. Right. So when you are dealing, and hot plug is actually one of the biggest things that we deal with on the tech support side of things as to what could be causing a problem. Now, it really, this is really just the sequence of events as you, play, as you turn on a device, it's going to of course send out, the source part of me is going to send out the five volt trigger to say, hi, I'm awake, is anybody there? The hot plug is the return saying, who is it? And then at that point, then it can move on to the negotiation process. Which, which is next week. Which is next week, and we'll talk about that at that time. But what do the problems look like uh, we when we get this? We see a lot of them. Okay. Let's start. Can we start with, with the 5 volt and see sure. what kind of problems do we see when okay, they're well, when 5 volt? Okay, let's back up. A okay. bunch of years ago, we created a product called the A, called the VI2. I have to remember my part numbers. There you go. The voltage insertion. Yes. Now, its purpose was specifically because of Sharp televisions. Okay. Sharp had an issue with having enough voltage slash current to support the hot plug, but we also had to give it a very solid 5 volt door knock. Right. And not every device out there, it's actually 4.7 to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But not every device out there was even hitting 4.7. You were seeing 4.3, 4.4, Some displays were fine with that. Mm -hmm. Some displays were not. And nothing was wrong with the system per se. Right. And it could also depend on the cable. Now, because you have this opened up, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. Wire gauge is critical to voltage and current transmission. Yes. And <laughs> very much so. It's all about loss. Yes. The thicker the gauge, the less the loss. The shorter the cable, the less the loss. Mm -hmm. So if you have a short fat cable, there's no loss. And 5 volt or 4.7 volts also carries current. Now, what is the difference between current and voltage? Voltage is pushed. Yes. Current is drawn. Can you have too much voltage? Yes. Can you have too much current? Uh, no. Exactly. <laughs> Unless there's a short. Uh, yes. If there's a short, of course, that's so, uh, anybody who's in the, the 12 volt world uh, as well understands the idea that, that uh, the current is the reason that we have a fuse in place for a power supply right. for like an amplifier or something. Too much. Exactly. And burn up the battery or whatever else. So. So when you're looking yes. at, at voltage, yep. 4.7, yep. The whatever device it is, the, the source or the display, depending on our purpose, mm -hmm. is pushing that voltage. That's merely the highway. Right. So it's a four-lane highway, a six-lane highway, however many lanes. Right. The current is how much traffic, how much poundage, mm -hmm. how big a truck yes. we are driving down that roadway. Right. Now, here's the thing. I can bring you two tons of food. Mm -hmm. If all you need to eat is one Big Mac, yep. that's all you're going to take. Yeah. But I can't cram six lanes of road into a one lane tunnel. Right. That's voltage. Right. So too much voltage, you fry stuff. Yes. Too much current, never a problem. If you're hungry, you can get more food out of my truck. So with the five volt positive power that's added in there, of yes, course we had the, the, the VI2 Yes. Uh, before. Now, of course, we have the AIO. Which has the VI2 built into it. Which has it. the AIO, uh, sorry, has the VI2 built into it. So what that's going to do is ensure that we are getting 4.7 volts the at the correct HDMI specification of current right. with overhead. Yes. With now, just enough overhead, not too much overhead, just enough well, overhead to make sure that, it, that it, it takes what it needs. HDMI says 0.55 milliamps. Okay. 
that's very little current. Now that's just for that. You also need current on TMDS feeds and other things. Mm -hmm. So that is why we include a one amp power supply on the AIO. Right. Because we want to make sure that there's enough current to do everything you could possibly do and still have overhead. So what does it look like for the average person who's out there who's doing the installations? What does a bad five volt power look well, like? Well now sadly, because one of the things <laughs> as you know that sales is always asking, well we need a sheet that tells us which device to use for which problem. Right. HDMI problems pretty much fall into three categories. A black screen, a sparkly screen, or HDCP not supported. That's pretty much what we see. Yeah. Occasionally you'll see some weird color shifts and that's really easy to determine the problem. Bad cable. Or EDI D yeah. failure. Yeah. But Usually brought on by a bad cable. And sparkles is very much a bad cable or distance. Yes. Everything else that you're going to see in the HDMI world, as a rule, follows down into uh, HDCP not supported, uh, mode out of range, or yep. black screen, or long time to sync. Right. And the problem is, what's the problem? Yeah. Well, anything. Uh, yeah. So the very first thing you want to start with is the bus. Yeah. So are we giving it a good door knock? Right. Now, this sounds simple, right? How hard is it to build 5 volt, 55 milliamp power supply? <laughs> That's funny. It's not it, difficult. But it costs money. But it costs money. And right now, every device manufacturer is trying to cut corners to cut cost. Yes. This is why, you know, in the past we would sell thin cables and they were very popular because they were very flexible. Yep. Works really well inside of a rack yep. and everything's good and there. And now you and I both, yeah. Yep. You and I both are a little hesitant to recommend a thin cable because of current and voltage bleed because they are right at the bleeding edge of failure before you plug your cable in. So in most cases, when you're using this inside of a rack, you're going to be okay. And the reason for distance. that is it's a short distance, and in most cases, you're going into professional equipment inside that rack, meaning a matrix, an AVR, and in most cases, they're I not like the as you keep quick. Most I cases. know, right? In most cases, they're not as quick to give up the quality of the power supply on those devices. Um, many manufacturers uh, in the display worlds uh, are more quick to give up those those power because supplies. Because their their assumption is you're going less than three feet from right. your display. Yep. To your source. Now, it's amazing to think that when you have a 65, 75, and 80 inch television. Yeah. Yeah, that source is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But they, that's their contention. In our world, anyway. So, as always, everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, if you are checking in live, we are asking for your questions and comments in the chat section below uh, or off to the side. I think it's over on one of those sides. Uh, then from there, also, if you're catching this your after side. the fact, is it on my side? There your you go. Side. If you're catching this after the fact, uh, please leave your comments and questions down in the comment section below. As always, we do check that. Uh, and if this has been a helpful video for you so far, we're not done yet, uh, live, uh, give us a like. Let us know that, that it was a good video, that, that you want more information like this. And you this. can send money. Yeah, as always. We're not proud. Yeah. So the next thing that we want to talk about is hot plug. Yes, because without the hot plug, the source doesn't know to do a darn thing. Exactly. It's sending out the 5 volt. It's it's knocking. It's like you're, right. it's that delivery guy who's come in to knock on the door. And, yeah, and, I got your pizza. Yeah, but nobody's answering. So, hot plug. What does it... And actually, let me back up. When you, we have a problem with 5 volt, mm -hmm. probably the most... The, what you're really going to see when you get a 5 volt pro, uh, power problem is no picture. Right? Because you're also going to get no hot plug. Exactly. So... What do we see with problems with hot plug? What does hot plug problems look like? Well, sadly, we're back to the same problem because here's what happens. Right. Um, I give you your door knock. How you doing? Right, right. You respond to your door knock. Right, right. Now, here's the issue. Unlike the two of us where he's obviously younger, healthier, and larger than I am, I am actually providing the voltage and current that he's going to turn around and send back his hot plug. Yes. He's not generating his own hot plug. He's taking a little bit of me and sending it back to me. Am I the... Wait. You're the display. I'm the display. Mm -hmm. I'm not powering you? I'm powering... Well, no, that's TMDS. We'll get to that ah, down the road. All right. So I'm sending you 5 volts and 55 milliamps. Okay. You're going to take that, run it through an internal relay, close the relay, and send back some of me... Right. ...to me. Right. And hopefully we have not lost any in the transition, or we're not too long, and I'm not tone deaf. Yep. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Which does happen. Which does happen because yes. you may be hanging on to a little more of the voltage and current than I expect you to. Right. So 
that problem, when, when you have a, a, a hot plug problem, it, the symptom looks very similar to, to a every 5 other, volt power problem. Oh, it is the same, it's just no picture. No picture. And the reason for that is, of course, is that the source device is saying, hi, I'm not here. but the display is saying... At least the source device is not hearing it say correct. anything. Correct. So that's why we want to make sure that we're not whispering back, saying, who is it? Yes. We're actually yelling back through the door, hey, saying, I, I know you're there. Yeah, I'm on my way, or whatever it is. It's, you know, who is it? So then at that point, we need to make sure that, of course, the source device and the display device are getting enough current, enough power. In both directions. In both directions. So when a hot plug issue is prevalent, hot plug actually may not be the thing to fix it. So the hot plug interrupt feature that we have on the AI2 is not necessarily the, the fix for this the problem. The interrupt part isn't. No. The but, hot plug supplementation yes, it is. is. So with our AIO2, of course, you can take the hot plug connection, uh, have everything plugged into it, and it will actually ins reinsert the uh, required power. With headroom. With headroom back onto the hot on plug On the current, connection. not on the voltage. Right. Now, it's interesting because for years we used to see people putting splitters on the output of satellite receivers. Clock stretching. Clock stretching. <laughs> yeah. About the clock stretching. Yeah. There's nothing polite I can do. Yeah. Um, it wasn't clock stretching. Nope. What the splitter was actually doing was providing correct voltage and current for both the hot plug, typically. Yep. And the 5 volt going forward. Right. And the TMDS feeds that we'll get into in episode 5 or 6. Somewhere around in there, yeah. Yep. Because there's actually, a yeah, lot going on there that was a oh, we're clock stretching. No, you're not. Nope. You're just fixing the power problem. Yes. Now. Hey, DirecTV's actually made it worse intentionally, yeah. we think. That's a that's that's a, a hearsay. An, an opinion. That's hearsay. With the firmware update that is actually requiring more current, not more voltage, but more current on the return path. Right. To make on the TMBS feeds again, episode five or six. But these are things to voltage current will continually come back through this discussion. Mm-hmm. Because every bit, everything that happens on the HDMI bus, everything that happens in this cable, yeah. centers around voltage and current, whether it's the quantity or the speed of transition from high to low. Yeah. Voltage and current is the reason that this works or doesn't work. Right. And, we'll, and like you said, we're going to be hitting that topic over and over. Actually, I'm, we'll probably talk about it multiple times per episode. So to, to sum everything up, when it comes to the 5-volt, power and or sorry the, the 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 five volt initiation and the hot plug return when you have problems with both of those it, you're going to see a black screen you know what happens if the doorbell ce ceases to work don't know that anybody's there and the guy delivers the pizza he's just going to stand there for a little bit are anyways. you going to get your pizza nope probably not yep now and again because this works both ways he has to know i'm knocking on the door to say hey i'm on the way with your money yeah it's that simple without both the five volt to me. Right. And that, yo, I'll be there in a minute. Yep. From him. Yep. The system's never going to function. And it happens a lot. Now, as mentioned at the first of the video, make sure your plug's fully inserted into your devices because that will absolutely yeah. cause that to happen because the five volt feed is slightly recessed. And again, that's on purpose. When you are, um, so to solve the problems with five volt power and the hot plug uh, re return, the best thing that you can do, of course, physically without adding any other new devices or anything like that, is just to ensure that everything is seated correctly. And if, and the, the next thing to try just for what it's worth is a short fat cable. Yeah. Because it does matter. Yep, replace that, that thin cable. Even if it's one of ours, we've actually done that a couple times uh, in certain situations. And it does make a difference. And can, uh, replace it with something thicker that's gonna have more ins insulation and more, more copper. importantly, more copper. And it does make a difference in many situations. So if you run and into a problem, which in most cases you won't. I would love to give you a cheat sheet that tells you every brand, but we find it varies depending on board manufacturer, board date, yes. firmware. Yes. Because a firmware update in your system can change all of these parameters internally to the devices. Which we do work very closely with manufacturers of AVRs and displays and whatnot, because of course we are the, the device that's actually connecting their equipment. And so we want to work with them and, and make sure that everything works and for them. And as a rule, they don't want failure. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They don't want to take back to no. defective equipment. They just want it to work and be happy. Yeah, not really defective. So with that said, um, that pretty much covers 5-volt power and hot plug, unless you had something else to add to um, that. I think that about covers on that. The things that 
right out of the gate, keep an AIO in your truck. Yes. The AIO is the go-to tool for fight in every, pretty much everything we discuss except distance for video over the next six episodes. The AIO is absolutely the go-to repair tool. And it works. I don't care if it's a fiber cable or if it's, and by the way, as your cables get longer, for example, fibers. Yep. Um, we have, we allow for power supplementation on the install bay detachable head shell. Yes, we do. And on the new VLOX 48 gig cable. And why do we do this? Well, because the, the video signal is light. It is a light based video signal, but everything else is still copper. Yes, it is. It's these four wires right there. Yep. And the longer the distance, the wires, the wires are according to HDMI, the correct gauge. Mm-hmm. However, because manufacturers of sources and displays all play by different rules, you still may not have enough voltage and or current at the source side. Right. Having an AIO with you resolves those issues. I don't care whose cable it is, mm -hmm. whose AVR, whose the TV it is, it makes a difference having the proper voltage and the proper current. Keep an AIO in your vehicle, Keep an AIO on your troubleshooter's vehicle. Yep. And have a couple backed up in the warehouse. Yep. So with that said, I want to kind of jump in real quick. We'll talk about the news that's happening here. And okay. then after that, let's talk about some uh, tech calls that we've had. Okay. Let's do some interesting tech calls. Um, so uh, the thing that we're talking about today is the fact that Cedia is canceled for the physical show. No. Uh, with, uh, as everybody already knows, pretty much. Uh, however, they have announced the dates for their virtual show. So they're going to be uh, doing a show September 15th through the 17th, which today, of course, is the 19th of August. So in about a month or time, a month from now, we'll be doing a virtual uh, CDA show. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be doing anything on our know. side yet. We'll be, we'll be talking to management at that point to find out. Keep in touch with us to find out if we're doing anything at all uh, for that. But uh, just to let you guys know, they are going to be holding a CDA show of some kind. So do keep, in, keep that in mind. So I talked with Sony. Yep. last night and televisions 295 projectors 695s are coming back into stock oh wonderful um avrs mostly in stock yeah starting to ship and yeah yeah um maybe right now, could stock be. for everybody's a problem yeah so and believe me nobody sat around and said hey we want to make life miserable for the uh ci's come august but yeah yeah so uh, that's good. That's really good news for everybody, uh, yes. us included, because that means that you're going to need HDMI cables for for your connections. Uh, so definitely reach out to your distributors uh, or reach out to Sony directly. Also, seeing uh, the Yamahas appear to be stocked and shipping. Mm -hmm. um, Onkyo, Integra, Pioneer could be yeah September, October. Yeah. Um, DNM is starting to get back in stock. Um, Sony TVs are decent. Samsung's in stock well. Yep. At least from what we're seeing from the distributors. Yeah. Amazon, they've never stopped shipping. Yeah, exactly. They, they still have everything that, that they have. So, uh, any interesting tech calls we, we've had over, uh, over the last week? Yeah, here's the sad part you and I talked about one yesterday, and I have completely vapor locked So, on it. let's talk about what happened to us over at the uh. house. So, uh, which, which particular problem? <laughs> uh, well, primarily it came down to the fact that we burned out an AOC cable. Yes, we did. So what happened? Well, first and foremost, uh, I need to come clean and say that it's something that I did to start with. Uh, you, before we, we were talking about the fact that we have on our AOC cables, you know, power insertion. This is on our VLOX line. Original, original uh, our original, our VLOX. original VLOX AOC. In fact, um, if you'll walk over there and grab one. Is there one over there? Yes, there is. There and is. a power supply. Did I save that over here? I thought I got rid of that. Nope, there it is. I don't have a power supply. I, I got a USB cable. Hey, close enough. Yeah, that'll work. So, there's actually, uh, now again, this is... This, this is, is our first series of fiber. Yes. Now, with this fiber cable, it does have the USB uh, power on there. On both ends. On both ends. And it is required to have power inserted. I did not, however, plug in power on my connections. And you know what? It worked. The problem is, is that it was drawing too much current. current. And it burned out the AOC... Uh, a, connections inside of this. It actually burned out the chipset inside of the head shells. Uh, and so we actually used our new extender well, as a replacement. Unfortunately, because yeah. when we wired, yeah. we do wire to CYA. Yes. Yep. Which meant uh, coax, two coaxes. Yep. Um, a 16.4 and 
a Category 5 and a Category 6 yes. to every location. That is correct. And a few extra things on top of that, including Smurf Tube. Yeah. Um, so we were able to use our brand new 120 meter mm -hmm. 4K extender. Yep. And I. We did it the wrong uh, way. I like that piece. Uh, We did it the wrong way. Now, again, we do not recommend doing it this way because you you will run into problems eventually, and we're fully the aware of later, it. You're going to run out of bandwidth on the extender. It, there's already plans for us to go back and fix it, but uh, we have found that our new extender has the ability to go through punch downs and patch cables. Do not do that. Please don't do it. We did it the wrong way. We did it on we purpose. Did it, yeah, quickly. Because we needed to get in there, get it done, now. and get out of there. So, uh, in the long run, we're going back and actually replacing all of that and running everything correctly. But the good news is, is that it, it works. It worked great. And, and I'll be honest, I did not do a good termination with that. Whenever we get phone calls and we say, ensure that you have your good terminations, make sure you got everything flat up against the front of it. It's got nice and even well, all the way across. The tools eight shiny copper yesterday. dots and everything. I didn't do that. No, because we, honestly, yeah. what we went to do yesterday had nothing to do with that. Nope, and nope. we went according to the job, which is our own fault. Yep. Yep, and that's you know, we, we didn't bring the correct tools with us or anything else for that, but that's what happens to us but, out there but, for and that. And what's so. the part number on that extender? Uh, good luck with that. Uh, it's the P2120. P2120? I, that one P2 I think that's... CSHDBT P2120-120. Dash 120. Contact um, your reps, contact your distributors and find awesome. out. Yeah, it's, it's a great extender. We're very happy with it. Um, we're very, very, very happy with Stuart it. Stuart did an awesome job yes, on that did. piece. And yep. Wow, it, it definitely saved our butts yesterday because TV was working and then it wasn't working. And how you can tell this is the problem uh -huh. is you'll start to lose resolution. Yep. It's like it quit playing 4K, but it played 1080p for a yep. little bit. Yep. Now you can unplug it, let everything cool down. Yep. And plug it back in. But what happens when you have a current starvation issue, which is what this was. Yes, it is. It starts to cause deformation of the circuit board. And that deformation gets worse and worse over time. Yep. Little ripples and bubbles and delaminations boils. and everything yeah. else. Yeah. And as this happens, it will die faster and die faster and die faster each time around. Yes. So, in fact, when we spec our cables, we spec a one amp power supply. Mm -hmm. As I am learning more and more of the new TV situations, I am recommending a two amp power supply. Yes. Because overhead is great. It This will work fine. It's not going to draw enough to damage it. Right. But if you need that additional current, because you're not just powering this. When you look at the new fibers, the first version of the fiber was powered at both ends. So each one got a power supply. Mm -hmm. Now they're pli they get powered at one side. Right. And you are powering the transmit, you're powering the receive, and you're powering the output of the source. Right. And we're going to get deep into this in a, I think, episode five. Uh, for the team, DS? Yes. Yes. Uh, I believe it's episode five and six, in fact. Okay. I think we covered uh, on so two of those. You want to have proper current, regardless. Right. Um, if something's spec for an amp, put in a two amp power supply. The next reason for this, just for what it's worth, and every manufacturer faces this except for Apple, because they got the power. Mm -hmm. Don't believe the Chinese on the current rating. Yeah. So. All that, to, all that said, I think we've covered a pretty good uh, um, start of the series. We're yes. talking about, of course, the five volt and the hot plug. Uh, tomorrow, or sorry, not tomorrow. Next week. Next week's episode, uh, we'll be jumping into the next thing that happens, which is E did. E did. Captain, uh, my captain, oh, E did. Uh, oh, captain, my captain, E did. E did. So what we'll be talking, of Call course, is e uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, 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 captain, my E did, captain. That's what I said it was. So with that, uh, we'll be talking about E did. Uh, in fact, I think that's a two part series. Uh, and by the way, E did is the most important part. Yes. Of the HDMI bus, because without that, yep. nothing else. Well, it's the same thing we said today, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Without that, nothing else happens. Exactly. So, with that said, everybody, uh, definitely check us out next week. We do this every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can uh, view them anytime. And you can view them anytime because it's recorded and put up on onto YouTube as well. Um, we uh, we recommend you go back and watch previous episodes that we ha have talked about. If you have questions, as always, you can contact us at Tech Support at 386-492-8584. You can contact Brent at 866 866- 839-9187, extension 2203, and it does follow you. It follows my cell phone. Now, starting yeah. this afternoon, we're recording a new series specific to the products called... Did You Know? Did You Know? Did You Know? 
We'll be and letting you know. It's just little short things that you want to know about the items. Yeah. And we'll be getting and into that. This is going to be a fun one because we don't have to get super in depth. But I think it's gonna, this series is going to be an excellent fun. Yeah. So, everybody, thank you, as always, for checking in with us. If you have further questions, further comments, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Or you can contact us at Tech Support with any problems you may be having. Even if you want to say thanks for the episodes or thanks for this or thanks for that. And, by the way, we do love those. Yes, we do. Uh, the people who do call back and say thanks for helping it, it's working now, we, we, we really appreciate that. Uh, if we helped you out in today's episode or if we helped you out in other videos, uh, let us know by leaving a like on that video. A subscribe is very helpful to us. And hit that little bell notification to let you know when we go live live or when we launch new episodes for other things. And it doesn't things. hurt when we go in for pay raises. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, to, make, to let them know that we're actually doing something good. So, uh, everybody, we will see you next time. As always, reboot early, reboot often, turn off CEC. And don't cut your wires too short. Nope, call tech support. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.